Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Purpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today, I wanted to take a second and thank you for being here. I usually do that at the end of the video and I wanted to do it now and just say that I am glad that you stopped in to watch my crafting, uh, thrifting, thrift flips, repurposed, recreations, and I'm hoping that I inspire some of you to pick up a paintbrush or a spray can or just go in the thrift store and uh, just kind of reimagine different things that are there into something uh, that maybe you'd want to bring home and put into your home. So, and I've heard from several of you that uh, it's, that is just the thing that you go and you think of me when you go to the thrift store, which I totally think that's awesome. And I appreciate that. Uh, what would Shelly do with this? <laughs> and uh, I just get a kick out of that. And I think it's great. And I appreciate it. Uh, pretty soon here, I'm going to be doing a live, I hope, and I will be able to um, reach out to some of you and be able to talk to you kind of not face to face, but just live and you know you can ask me questions and I'll try to answer them and uh, just have some fun. I have some candles that I need to kind of grubby up and get ready to put in my Etsy shop. I'm getting low. A bunch of people have bought them which if you got if you're one of them I very much appreciate that and I hope you're enjoying them. Uh, but I do have a bunch that I need to make up so I wanted to maybe do that on the live. I thought it would be fun to just kind of be doing that and chat with you at the same time. So I'm going to stop here so that we can get into the video because I know that's what you're here for, not to hear me blather on about other things. So I really appreciate you being here again. Thank you so much and I hope you enjoy the video. I always love spending time with my granddaughter, but when she comes over and she says, Grammy, let's paint something, that just tugs at my heart. So she's, I said, I'm gonna go find something for you to paint, and I brought this out, this really cool uh, clock that I've had in my stash for a while, and she's like, oh yes, I really wanna paint that. And so here we are, taking it apart, we're checking it all out, it's got a little cute little drawer in it, and I explained to her that we had to take the back off because I wanted to take the glass out so that she could paint it and not worry about getting paint on anything. And we are just um, screwing it because um, we're going to paint it and that's what we're going to do. So, um, yeah. So she insisted on taking the screws out and uh, she did a really good job with it and I helped her just loosen them up a little bit. So we took that part out, and then when we found out, once we took that out, that the glass was in there, and it was really gonna be a pain to take it out. So I told her we needed to put some tape on the glass to keep it from getting paint on it. So she wanted to help with every step of the way with this thing, so we covered that with tape, and then um, I did all the intricate little corners and the edges and she got the middle and then she started painting. She is a lefty and she definitely uses it uh, to her advantage. She just goes right for it. <laughs> she's having so much fun and through the whole time she's talking to the camera and saying things mostly the same thing over and over again like guys we're painting this. <laughs> this is what Grammy wants to do but this is actually what Katie wanted to do. So we had a great time and she did such a good job painting and I just had to point out a few little drips here and there. She had some puddles of paint, but she did a really good job and she's even wearing her little apron that I got her from Timu and she was so excited when she saw it. She said, Grammy, you got that for me? And yes, I did. <laughs> so she was thrilled. Uh, she got a lot of paint on her hands and she had to immediately clean it off as soon as she was done. So while that's drying and she headed off home with her mom, I took some of my Oops paint, just some off-white paint that I got, and I think it was Lowe's or Home Depot, I'm not sure which one, 
but uh, I'm going to paint up the gold. I went back and forth about this, and I wasn't sure what I was going to do and if it would look good. But I wanted to use some of this Tim Holtz paper on the face of the clock and dress it up and make it look more, I don't know, primitive, more rustic. I don't know what I was looking for, but I just wanted something different for the face of it instead of the gold. So I took uh, the Tim Holtz aviator, aviary, <laughs> I can say it, aviary paper, and I'll have a link down in the description for that. It's back in stock. And I just cut out little pieces and I went around the clock face and it actually came out really, really good. I put down some Mod Podge to help stick it down and then sealed it over again with Mod Podge once I was done. But I just cut up little pieces here and there and it actually looked really good. So uh, all that worry about whether I should do it or not, I think it looks great. So I went all the way around, covered it all up, and it just took some time because of trying to get it all uh, nicely around the numbers without it covering them up and uh, just making it fit really good. So once I did that I and it dried a little bit and I sealed it, I sanded it down with my sandpaper to get the edges, the excess off the edges um, and that it, it just worked out really well and uh, it was just a lot of uh, back and forth whether I should even do it or not and I'm glad I did. So then I took my Tim Holtz um, antique linen spray and sprayed it on there because I wanted the paper because it had a whiter background I wanted it to darken it up to be more like around the numbers and more antique looking vintage so I sprayed it on there and just dabbed it off and it came out really well and matched the inside where the numbers are really well. Once I got the little clock face all done and the clock wood itself was dry, I went around and distressed the edges. I left the tape in there so that I could spray it with my clear sealer and not get it on the glass and then I'll take that off after. But I just ran around and highlighted the edges with the sandpaper, kind of um, making it look more distressed and aged. I did the little, the little shelf here and got that done as well. I sprayed it down with my Rust-Oleum matte sealer. I cleaned the glass inside and out and then added the clock inside and made sure everything worked just right. And this piece I think came out so primitive and rustic and vintage looking. I absolutely love it. Here we go with another basket redo. I found this a, quite a while ago for $4 at Goodwill and I just loved the shape of it. Every time I fix my baskets up like this and put them in my booth they sell very quickly and a lot of times on Etsy as well. So I'm using my dark stain. This is I took eight ounces of antique wax, eight ounces of water. I just used the same container the wax came in, poured that into a separate jar that was big enough to hold all that in a tablespoon of black paint mixed together. And it gives me this dark stain that I absolutely love. So I covered it all over and it comes up just with this nice rich look to it. And I wanted to add more to the basket, so I took some of this homespun fabric that I get from Hobby Lobby, but you can get it from Amazon. I will put a link down in the description if you're interested, if you don't have a Hobby Lobby near you. And I am putting it on the inside of my basket. 
So I put it, just glue it under the rim of the basket and I put my material on the outside. So that way when I flip it over and into the basket, it gives it a nice hemmed look edge on it. it this works excellent for lining baskets. And I use this all the time and I really love doing it this way because it looks so good and finished. And I think that's what sells the baskets a lot of the time. So uh, that's all I did was just go all the way around, a little bit of glue right under that lip and just made sure that it overlapped on the end. And this is how I do it. Just tuck it, just flip it in there. And then what I do is I look once I get it all tucked in, I look around the edges or under the lip and make sure that it got all the glue. There were a couple spots there that I needed to add some glue and just kind of pinch it in and make sure it was sealed around all the way nicely. But I think this adds so much to baskets, just a little lining, and it really doesn't take much material, and I love how it looks. So I have this little piece of burlap sack that I had and I cut it in half almost it was I tried to be kind of exact but not totally and then I just because um, I'm gonna wrap it around the basket I needed something a little bit longer so that's why I cut it and I'm just fraying it on the edges to give it a little uh, aged just some detail that I think looks really cool on baskets and then I'm um, wrapping it around I'm gonna glue it and I did the other one as well because that's gonna go around the back now you don't have to do this part, you could leave it totally open, but I really wanted to do more with this. I think it just dresses it up so nicely. So I glued the middle, made sure there was enough glue there, and went all the way around. I figured this would be my front, so I went all the way around with it. And then I took the other piece and went around the back and just tucked it in so it looked like kind of like all one piece. So there it is all finished. So I thought it needed more so I ripped off a piece of my black and tan material and just a little bit smaller than the burlap and I'm going to tie it in a knot in the front. Actually I guess I did a, a bow tie. So I just did a regular little tie and then I glued it so that it was straight and, and then I trimmed the, the bottoms of it and this piece is finished. I think it came out so cute. I love this basket. I recently thrifted this wine box from Goodwill for a couple dollars and I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it when I thrifted it but I've decided now and I'm going to show you. So it's it was from TJ Maxx I think for like eight dollars originally it had a price tag on the bottom but I am going to take the I'm going to flip it around I think it, it went the other way but I'm going to flip it around and use the the little slide door that they had and cut that down. So I'm just measuring out to cut it down where the bottle goes in there uh, and I'm going to cover that up. So first I'm going to take out this piece of rope. This originally was the top and now this is going to be the bottom. And I'm going to, as you can see there, I have that little piece I cut down for the front and I'm going to paint this all burgundy. Now this burgundy paint I make with crimson Waverly paint and I just pour it in and then I take a little bit of black paint and mix it in and it comes up with this burgundy paint. This is all chalk paint, but you can do it with any kind of paint. Um, 
I've done this with acrylic paint, whatever, whatever you can find. But this is what I have is a bunch of the red and the um, crimson. So that's how I mixed it up. And it comes out a beautiful burgundy color. It's a nice, dark, primitive color. So I had to do two coats all over the box and that little front panel that I cut out. And then I took my paddle bit because I'm going to be using a plug-in electric light. And I wanted that to go through the back of the box. So I just, just drilled a quick little hole through there. And then I'm going to undo the top of my candle and it comes down to just the wire inside and then I can bend it and get it in that hole because the base wouldn't fit. So, and then I can just screw it back in there just like that. It was really simple doing it that way. Most of them you can do that with. These are just uh, like Christmas candles, but I use these a lot. I get them a lot free at the dump, um, really inexpensively at a Goodwill or a Salvation Army thrift store. And I try to pick them up because I use them a lot in my, in my crafts. I glued my little light down inside and then the little box over the top. And I took a silicone bulb that I have and I put that in there. And then I decided that I was going to grubby up my candle uh, base. And I should have done it before I put it in, but I didn't think of it then. I thought it would be fine, but I actually wanted to grubby it up. So I just did it right in the box. It's not a big deal. Just added some Mod Podge for the stickiness. Took some of my grubby mix, and I'll put a link to that up above here and down in the description box if you want to know how to make it. And then I took some just some regular Spanish moss and put that around the base to cover up the hole and anywhere that I didn't get my grubby mix because I didn't make sure that I was real great with it. I just kind of sprinkled it on. I had some pit berries and I'm taking homespun material and I'm going to go around the bottom and give that a little knot, to double knot that. And I also put a little uh, flower on there that I have made out of um, some twine, but I don't think I show you on here. But I trimmed that down and then I thought it needed more in behind the light and I have this little candle plate. So I'm going to stick that with some hot glue in the back. Again, something I should have done before I put the box together, but I wanted to add a little bit of black paint because I can't distress this. So I took it and went around the edges of the box just to give it a little distressing and um, just, just some interest to it because it was just flat burgundy and I wanted a little bit of black on there. So just around the edges and then when I kind of get too much, I would just wipe it off and wipe it back. It worked out really well. I hope you love all these primitive rustic home decor pieces. Let me know down in the comments what was your favorite if you have one. If you enjoyed my channel and this content, there will be more to come. So make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you get notified whenever I upload a video. And make sure you hit the like button and comment and let me know what your favorite is. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.